Hi, this is Jared from Shunome, and today I want to do a quick video going over some of the updates I've made to my Shunome open template for ARCHICAD 22. I know we're only a month or two away from ARCHICAD 23, and I will hopefully jump right on building my ARCHICAD 23 template, but uh, I have a new project to start in ARCHICAD 22 this week, and I was long overdue for adding some updates. So, uh, a couple of the big things I want to point out is I have created some 3D structural views. Um, I found these have been really great for communicating with the structural engineer um, and uh, what's going on. This model is obviously very simple, but the intent of this is that it makes all the walls, roofs, floors uh, translucent, the layer combination hides most things, and then all you see is the structure in color. Uh, when you're looking at a much more complicated um, model, this is very handy. So that's one thing we've added. Um, I've also go ahead and renamed the 3D views, or the renderings, to just 3D views because uh, I find that I just use the 3D views from the 3D window in my document set rather than renderings because they look nice and they're faster. Um, the Probably the biggest changes I've made are to graphic overrides. I've created a um, an egress check graphic override. So if we click on this under model checking, egress check, it's going to highlight in green what's an egress opening and in red what's not. Actually, that was already there. I changed how it um, views elements. And so uh, previously it would look at windows and now it looks at um, ARCHICAD classifications that are openings. That adds a lot more versatility. Um, the new one that I added was uh, tempered glass. So blue is tempered, red is not tempered. Uh, this is great when you're doing construction documents and you want to just check and make sure that you've picked up all your tempered glass. Um, Another model checking um, graphic override that I've included is this one that shows the difference between associative and non-associative labels. So here, um, this label is green because it is uh, an associative label. If I were to place another one that's not associative, you'd see that it's in red. So you can quickly look. Um, at your drawings and see what labels are attached to elements and what are not attached. Um, see, I'm sorry, I'm looking over my list here. What else I want to show? The other big thing in um, graphic overrides is this one that I'm calling diagrams. It's Pochet Zones Diagrams. And uh, what this does is, let's go look at it. I've set up a bunch of rules that are called red, orange, yellow, green, blue, whatever. And if the property diagram color, we'll look at that in a moment, if that's set to red, then the element's overridden by red. Same with purple, orange, green, blue, what have you. And so uh, if we go up to property manager, we can go up to design and file organization. These are properties that I have created and put into my template. We've got diagram color here. And if we go to the option set, I've just created a pick list of the major colors. Uh, what this allows us to do is say, you need to make a diagram of something. Maybe you just want to highlight that this wall is important. So we go and select, say, green. And so now that wall is going to show up as green in this plan. We're not changing it anywhere else. We have the ability to highlight different elements um, in plans. So this is kind of loose in the sense that um, you could rename this to, you know, one hour wall, two hour wall, whatever. But in the template, I've just created diagrams and this loose system that allows you to go and say, you know what, for whatever reason, uh, this wall is now purple in this diagram viewpoint. Uh, and if we go back to you know a main level or electrical plan or you know just any other plan, you'll never see that color 
because it's only going to show up when you go to the um, diagrams uh, graphic override. Um, I've created a bunch of new favorites. I'm not going to jump through all those, but there's a list of those. Uh, and then I also, the other big thing I did is I created a lot of new composites, uh, a bunch of skins. I find that when I'm modeling a building, I want to be able to uh, add, you know, a one inch layer of plywood sheathing or wood sheathing or, you know, five eighths of whatever. Um, and then along with that, I've also created some standard existing exterior and interior walls. A lot of my work up here in Seattle is on houses built between 1910 and 1950. And a lot of those walls are two by four walls with um, seven eighths inch of plaster on either side. So I'm still using Jipboard just because I don't see a reason not to, um, but I've created these walls for my own convenience. And if you're doing project types similar to mine, you'll probably like them as well. Um, I think those are the major things that I wanted to cover. Uh, in the accompanying blog post to this video uh, will be a full list of everything, but I want to at least point out some of that graphic override stuff because I think it's pretty great. Uh, and hopefully we'll get your mind going to think of interesting ways to use that. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, talk to you guys later.